What's up travelers? It's Eliz from Means to Travel and today I have back here on the channel my best friend Rachel who is a flight attendant for a US based carrier and after the last flight attendant Q&A that we had on this channel we thought it was such a success that I asked a lot of you guys to submit your questions on social media and on the community page on this channel and we would do another round of questions and so many of you guys came through that we are actually turning this today into a bit of a series we're going to do three different videos that are going to come out over the next couple weeks on this channel so definitely make sure you're subscribed and have that notification bell set if you want to see all of the answers to all of the questions but without further ado welcome rachel thanks for coming back to needs to travel thanks for having me yay we're so excited Okay, so let's just jump right in. Sweet, I'm ready for takeoff. Oh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, let's. Now that we're in the mood. Okay, so if the very first few questions that we're gonna ask today are about like your hotels that you stay in uh -huh. during your layovers. Okay. So there's several that came through. Um, so first and foremost, if you sleep at a hotel on your layover, who pays for those? My company does, and yes, I do sleep at a hotel on my layover, <laughs> not in the airport. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, so then, how much choice do you get on where you stay? Like, do you stay so, at a specific hotel? So we stay at a lot of different chains, um, and we get some preference, we get some say, we get to rate the hotels when we stay with them, we can say positive things, and we have a whole... Um, a community of flight attendants that get to choose the hotels for us and have some input so oh cool so yeah. how do you get part of that community do you just like <laughs> I think you just volunteer apply. yeah you just volunteer it's an extra curricular cool. kind of thing um but then it stays the same for a while so every time you go to a city for a given chunk of time it'll be the same hotel okay. so it's kind of yeah. That maybe feels a little familiar. Like yes. this is my home in Detroit. This yeah. Is my home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. Um, and then another question that this is kind of like getting into uh, the next question, but I'll just jump right in with one of my own is do you stay at like the same hotel chains or do they vary in each city? They vary in each city. So we stay at most every hotel chain that's out there. Sometimes we stay in boutique hotels. Usually it's a national chain, but there okay. we stay at all the different chains. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So then from that, uh, do you get any hotel benefits um, beyond the free hotels during your layovers? So like if you're staying at, say, a Hilton or a Hyatt or whatnot, you know, sometimes they'll offer people who stay frequently like free nights or... Um, continental breakfast or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So our since our company books the hotels, um, we don't really get those kind of benefits because um, we aren't paying for it personally, but they do sometimes make breakfast for us in the morning when we leave really early and they know we're gonna, we are going to miss their regular breakfast, yeah. which is super nice because sometimes we have to leave the hotel at four in the morning, yeah. which is not fun, but... Um, and then sometimes they have happy hours and so yeah. And Rachel's gone over in the last video um, like what her typical schedule looks like and long story short the answer is like it varies a lot. Yeah. So some yeah. mornings she might be on the 6 a.m. flight, other days she might not be on start a 6 work. p.m. flight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. until then. So, um, but no matter what like the hotels that you stay at, do they typically have free breakfasts and stuff? Not all of them, but some of them, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I pack my food, so it doesn't really bother me one way or another. Yeah, so nobody asked this specific question, but maybe we could just jump right into some of those details real quick. Yeah, so I'm usually gone for maybe two and a half days, and I pack all of my food for that time. So that could be like eight meals or something. Um, and you have like a little purse lunch box. It's so well, I have, pretty. <laughs> well, I have that for like if I'm just gone for a meal. It oh, doesn't really okay. hold that much. That's but true. I do have a very large cooler lunch box yeah. um, that can hold several days worth of food. So I yeah. do that. And you do that because I've, I've flown with her before. Mm -hmm. So she has like her carry-on and her personal item. And then um, because she's crew, she gets to have the extra lunch box on yeah. there too. And I'm like, oh, so jealous. <laughs> Um, but I think it's so smart because that way you don't have to eat airplane food all the time. But there are certain flight attendants who do, right? Well, airport food. We don't really have airplane food. Usually. I mean, it, we serve first class, but that's for them. Um, yeah. 
So yeah, so then I don't have to re rely on airport food or hotel food or whatever. Yeah, then okay. I have my own food and it's cheaper and healthier that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Okay, so next question is still about hotels. Uh, do different airlines have crews stay at different hotels? Not intentionally, but yeah, we stay at lots of different hotels and sometimes we stay at the same hotel. Okay, so yeah. I've seen like certain crew, like a lot of them will stay really close to the airport if they have like quick layovers, right? Yeah, and then so the shorter the layover, the um, we don't have a ton of time, we stay close to the airport. The longer the layover that we get to stay in like the downtown area or the happening part of town. Of the, yeah. <laughs> the cool part. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to have, you know, bars and restaurants and shopping and walking and yeah. yeah. Do you like to see sometimes if you're, if you are in the mood to like walk around and explore, do you see if your crew members like yeah, I haven't been doing out. that much this past year because I Fair. try not to hang out with anybody else during COVID. But yeah, sometimes we get together. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's so great. You guys yeah. get to like have like instant friends yes, at least in exactly. the new city. Uh huh. Um, all right. So you kind of answered this one. Do you earn hotel points when we asked about the benefits? So one of the them? chains we stay at offers us that, for, but for the most part, no, because our company pays for it versus us. So yeah. yeah. But there are people that like, so she was talking to me a little bit about this before. So the way that if she wanted to capitalize on the benefits, she'd have to like give her like rewards number at mm -hmm. check-in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that just can be kind of a hassle, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Cause you're like getting in late and it's mm -hmm. just, you're tired. And yeah, it seems like the, the quickest way from like, the airport into the hotel bed sometimes <laughs> is, is the winning is one. The key, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so I think we've covered all of the hotel questions, okay. and then you kind of answered one of the other ones that came up, which was someone was asking if you sleep in the airport ever. Um, so I don't overnight, like, um, if I'm, you know, going to be somewhere overnight, they definitely yeah. put me in a hotel room. Yeah. But if I'm, if it's the middle of the day and I have time in between flights in every major airport, they make sure we have a lounge area with comfy chairs. And so if I do need to take a nap, yes, I do sleep in the airport. It's out of customer view. Um, but not, I never spend the night in the airport unless it's a hotel attached to the airport. Yeah. Sometimes the lounges, um, she like will tell me if we're flying together, she's like, the lounge is actually right below this gate. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I would have never known. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of hidden away, yeah. There's a whole like level under what the gates are that is all the operation of the airport. So yeah. all the ramp workers and gate agent lounges, flight attendant lounges, we all have like secret hidden spots in the airport, so. So cool. Yeah, so cool. The next couple questions are about turbulence. Okay. So, um, how intense was the worst turbulence that you experienced on a flight, and do you remember where it was? I don't remember where it was because it's kind of, I mean, I've been flying for 10 years and it's never been traumatic enough for me to specifically remember. Um, I do remember a flight, I just don't remember which one it was, where I was very happy to be in the back of the plane in our galley near my jump seat. Um, a flight attendant and I were back there and we were able to sit down very quickly. A third one of our crew members, luckily, unfortunately, was in the aisle and she just literally sat on the ground and held on to the aisle armrests around her and you know the passengers kind of held on to her. Oh. Um, so she, you know, you sit down so that you hopefully don't hit the ceiling. Right, um, or hit other people. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's, that's like a short period, it's kind of like a burst and sometimes it comes out of nowhere, sometimes you've ha we've had lighter turbulence and then it just like we hit a pocket or something. Yeah. Um, I'm based in Salt Lake City and the mountain air, when we fly in over the mountains on descent into the airport, it's usually pretty bumpy. Um, but and, that's, we, and that's the case with like a lot of mountain cities, not yes, just Salt Lake. Too. Right, of course. And we categorize our turbulence into three different categories. It would be light, moderate, or severe. Um, you've, severe, I don't even know for sure that I've experienced. It, it would be, we can't walk around. If you are in your seat and your seatbelt is on, you would 
feel like violently thrown against your own seatbelt, like you would be very happy yeah. to have it on. And like all of your drinks spill everywhere yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't walk anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things are spilling everywhere. Yeah. But then moderate, I mean, things do still spill and tip over, but you're gonna be able to walk if you're like holding on to things. Um, as a flight attendant, you obviously don't wanna be up as a passenger doing that. That's why you wanna pay attention to the seatbelt light, but. Right. Um, so nothing, luckily I've, you know, never experienced any severe, um, turbulence where anyone's gotten hurt luckily yeah. um i've definitely heard stories of people you know maybe lifting off the ground and hitting their head or the carts the the cart the beverage carts in the aisle are super heavy they're full of all of our you know beverages and snacks and ice and yeah. so Aren't those like are a, like one ton or some some, yeah. some outrageously yeah. heavy thing i, a I think lot you heavier. told me this one yeah. time a lot heavier than you would expect and so you probably might have seen um if you're into aviation you might have seen videos of the cart like tipping um or lifting off the ground i think there was After one the turbulence yeah. yeah i think there was one maybe last year or two years ago it happened um, went one day um not on either of our flights but we both were in salt lake city airport and met up in the airport yeah. Yeah. and then you were telling me about how because it was so turbulent that day that another flight had the cart tip over mm -hmm. and then it's so hard for people to like bring it back up i'm sure oh too, yeah it's so heavy yeah so it's a big hazard. Yeah. yeah. So that's why when we are maybe not in the aisle serving you a beverage because it's turbulent, that's why we're not going to do that because we're not we don't want to hurt anyone with that car, especially yeah. ourselves. So yeah, makes total sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry if we can't get your drink right away, but yeah, it's all for safety reasons. Well, I feel like all of the wonderful folks in this community are going to be like, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stay yeah. safe. Yeah. So you guys are very understanding. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, but I know that a lot of people still have questions about turbulence regardless of like if you fly really frequently or you know not very often I, I the way that I approach it is um, I kind of feel like if you know it's like oh I'm over a mountain or oh it's winter time because in winter time I feel like it can be a little bit bumpier too with the jet stream so or summer of, storms there's yeah, a, there's a yeah. lot of different weather events true and a good um, point to uh, point out is that like it's not gonna unless you are up and you're gonna hit something in the plane like it, turbulence is not gonna hurt the plane yeah you shouldn't feel scared that you're experiencing turbulence it's just like maybe like potholes on the road when you're driving or yeah so yeah well potholes can hurt a car but turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you're going fast enough let's, let's yeah. back that one <laughs> yeah. off a second but uh yeah no she has always said that to me is that like turbulence is not the thing that's going to hurt an airplane yeah. so um yeah that's kind of reassuring in itself yeah so i guess um, before I ask the last question about turbulence, I also want to ask, have you ever been on a flight that you think has gotten hit by lightning? No, never have. That's nice. Yeah, but luckily they are also built to withstand a lightning strike. They are, yeah. yes. And I learned so. that in high school science class. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Which, I don't know, they like like to drop the fun facts or something in <laughs> yeah. high school science class. But yeah, ever since I've been like, okay, we're going to be good. Yeah. And if it's a storm. Um, okay, so the last one is, are you ever scared when you have turbulence? No, I've never been scared. Like I said, um, I know that I'm safe if I'm, you know, properly buckled in, seated, whatever, and I'm safe in the sense that the plane's not going to be hurt. We're not going to, you know. Yeah. Um, so no, I've never been scared. I know people kind of look to us and yeah, <laughs> yeah, we we're well informed and usually the captain has informed us. So we're, um, you know, ready for it to happen. So, yeah. I always like when the pilots are like, Hey, so about an hour from after takeoff, it's gonna be a little bumpy, and then yeah. it'll you know be smooth sailing, and it's like, oh, okay, well I know what to expect. Now. Yeah, <laughs> they have a lot of information. Um, a lot of it comes from the planes that are in front of us, and so mm -hmm. they can report to the tower nearby. You know, this is what we're experiencing, and then the tower reports it to us. The following plane so yeah. that's a real time information that's really accurate. So that's for helpful. me. That's just like so. I just love when they do that. <laughs> more communication. Yes. <laughs> the more communication, the better. People are at ease. Yeah. So yeah. We, we try to make those announcements, even though, unfortunately, they interrupt your movies. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like, I was in the middle of something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're cognizant of that, but we also want to communicate. So <laughs> That's yeah. super funny because, yes, yeah, that it's like, oh, man. But it's like, okay, well, thanks for the warning. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, well, we have a ton of other questions that are going to be answered in the next two in this series. So definitely tune in to the next ones as yeah. well because we're filming them today too. Um, thank you so much, Rachel, for for coming back and answering more of our questions. You're welcome. Um, I'm sure both me and the community say thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's this. my pleasure. Thanks, guys, for submitting your questions and see you on the next video. Yeah, and if you have questions that you want for maybe future ones that we are filming, feel free to add them in the comments below. And don't forget to press that red subscribe button if you haven't already, so that way you don't miss any of the future flight attendant Q&A <laughs> videos or other travel videos that are on this channel. Thanks everybody for watching. Cheers, happy travels. Bye. Bye. Hey travelers, don't forget to subscribe and let's hang out more. Here are some links to other helpful travel videos on my channel and press that notification bell so you don't miss any new and awesome travel videos to come.